Welcome to KMET 1490 AM ABC News Radio and the Southern California Business Report with Yvette Walker, a show dedicated to highlighting successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them. Welcome and thank you for joining Southern California Business Report on ABC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM, and KMET TV. I'm Yvette Walker, live, blasting our signal from the center of Southern California, serving a population of over 25 million. Get us crystal clear and on demand by downloading the free live streaming app on Google Play and the Apple App Store. As always, a huge shout out to the team, Mitch, Bill, and Sean, I love you, and to our special advisory committee that can be found at www.scbrtalk.com backslash advisory committee. Okay, everybody, I hope you're ready for this. I have the distinct honor to introduce today, Miss Sheila Cavalier, CEO and founder of The Freaky Cookie, who set out to create something fun, something unique for the corporate gifting world that would communicate to customers and employees just how much they mattered. The result, Freaky Cookie, based on a family recipe dating back 100 years. A Los Angeles native, Sheila comes from a long line of bakers, writers, and a father who worked in the aerospace industry in the 1960s. This legacy of creativity, innovation, engineering, and a quest for out-of-the-box fun led to the creation of the Freaky Cookie, also known as the Cookie Disruptor. Thank you so much for being with us today, Sheila. Hey, thank you, Yvette, for having me. I'm so honored and privileged to share my story. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. So as you know, the first question I ask every one of my guests is to please share with us your journey to wanting to found and now become the CEO of The Freaky Cookie based on amazing family recipe that dates back over 100 years. Wow. Yeah. So I love sharing the story. You know, of course, we all have a passion we're driven by. I truly believe that everyone has a passion. And one thing I can say about The Freaky Cookie, if you're looking for something fun and fresh, look no further. You have the freaky cookie here and we're going to disrupt. We're going to give you something that you can enjoy and share with others. So with that said, the freaky cookie was founded in 2018. We are located in Rancho Cucamonga here in Southern California. It was the second of one of our journeys, I should say. We had two journeys. One started back in 2012 and we were serving pies. This family recipe of, like I said, coming from a line of create creators. I got my father in, in the aerospace, you know, and he's working on assembly lines and helping to put together our fabulous planes, you know, and he loved that job. And he would share stories about how his job and his part of, of the task would help to build that plane. And my sister and I would be so fascinated listening to these stories and going to the museums and, you know, just having those opportunities and experiences with my father. Grandmother, oh my God, as we all have those grandmas who love baking or cooking. Well, that was my grandma with those, with her rich Southern background. You know, I, I would go over to her home. I can remember my sister and I riding, running along the uh, train tracks and running to grandma's because she is going to be baking this cake and we wanted the beaters, right? We wanted to eat the batter off the beaters. And so my grandma just having this quest for baking, I, would love that. And I would just be around her all the time and watching her with all these amazing ingredients, all these different things she would just be adding in. She didn't have a paper. It was no recipes there, you know? So it's like, okay, what is she doing? And how do we get these great cakes? You're just, your mind is just like, you know, just going. And grandma was just an amazing one. So she, I really spent a lot of years with her and learned a lot about baking. You know, I would just, I just had that quest and didn't even really understand that it was just a deep passion at the time. You don't know that as a kid. You're just enjoying your journey. You're just enjoying being a kid and around good tasting desserts. So that was a really big part of my experience. Then, you know, you fast forward. Uh, I marry uh, a gentleman, my husband, Marcus, great guy from the South, New Orleans. My mother-in-law was a fabulous cook. I mean, the French cuisine is something she did well. And I got to learn her recipes. So I was always gravitating and collecting several recipes, you know, and as a stress reliever, that's what I did. I would always want to bake and cook. Well, the cooking side kind of went, you know, along the side, the cooking fruit. I really kind of just kind of ventured on to baking. 
and I would start creating recipes. I'm like, okay, I would see something and like, what am I going to make? Or I have, you know, a taste, a sensation, a taste for something. And I'm like, what am, what am I going to make with this? And I didn't pay it any mind. It was just a great stress releaser for me. I think back now, it was just so much innovation there. But in the line of work I was in, I couldn't connect the two. You know, I had this analytical ability in, because I was an auditor for many years. So I would always think of processes and how I can do something different. And putting the two together, pretty much we birthed at the time another company. And it was called DeVoe. And it was really, be, um, like I said, behind pots. And I would ask many people, do you want individuals to try your pies? You want the family, neighbors to try your pies or try your desserts to see whether or not it's just something you like, you know, or is it something that is going to gravitate towards others? Well, fine, lo and behold, it was something that I had, a, a, you know, an opportunity for. And we started doing pop-ups in Launchmont. And oh my God, I can remember the first time setting out my pie is holiday time. And we're just trying to sample the market. You know, we have a pie at 40 bucks. And to us, we're from, you know, Inland Empire, $40 pie is just doesn't even seem reasonable, right? So we did research. We know that $40 is a good market point for a pie out in launch month. We barely set the pie out. It was going to be display. If anyone wanted to order, they could order. I had someone literally say, I want the pie. They sampled the pie. I want it. I said, I don't have pies available today. They said, well, what is this one here? She said, we want that pie. And we were like, oh, my God, what is going on? So she bought the pie. And that was the beginning of the, the company at the time, which was Stavo. So, you know, we had these pies. We had a fruit, a few cookies in our mix. And we, our cookies would sell as well. But pies were really doing well in that area. Well, a couple of years, you know, we did this as a part time, you know, experience just to test the market. And you know, as you're traveling, you're going 65 miles. We're still into my other, my profession. It was just becoming a big wear. It's like either we're going to relocate and really try to understand how to build this company out here, or we're going to just, you know, come back where our kitchen was, which is in Rancho and build the company from there. Well, we did. We decided let's just stay out here. We, you know, we love the Inland Empire. This is home. And my husband wasn't too keen about relocating. So we were like, okay, we're going to stay here in, uh, in the Inland Empire. Well, it, that was a great move because the Inland Empire is growing by leaps and bounds. And because your cookies are designed for corporate giving, you are here to, you know, to win it, right? So you are in it to win it. Um, Sheila, please talk about the creativity and the process that goes into your cookies. Oh, my God, the processes. Okay, so... I will, first of all, look at a an existing dessert. I don't care where I am. And I can see, I don't want to make that particular dessert. I want to do something different. And I'm thinking in the lines of cookies, because that is what we learned the market was really, you know, uh, wanting out here in the Inland Empire. So I will look at recipes and I would think, how can I do it different? What taste am I trying to achieve here? And I would just do R&D testing for a while. I mean, that went on for about... I would say to uh, create my line of cookies, which had 30 uh, cookies in it, it took me about three years. So it was a lot of testing, experimenting, and selling, you know, of course, because you're not going to achieve that, um, you know, that great res result in that first or second round. It just doesn't happen. Of course, it was frustrating, but I knew I was onto something. And of course, I let individuals try my cookies. They would try them and they're like, oh, what the heck? Is that a cookie? And I can literally recall one lady asking me, what goes on in your mind when you're creating these desserts? And I'm like, oh, I never had anyone ask me that question oh. before. You know? So I was pretty <laughs> amazed about that. So it, when I'm when I'm making cookies, I'm thinking of how I can do it different. What is not expected in this cookie space? That's the thing. I mean, they have... I, don't get me wrong. I love my chocolate chips. So you're going to be able to find a chocolate chip in my staple mix. That's what we offer all the time. But there are so many other flavor notes that you can mix in and mesh that will create such great results, great cookies, until you'll just be amazed. And that's what I sought out to do. I mean, for example, you've got a, a key lime uh, cookie behind you, you know, so key lime in a cookie, you don't normally see that too often, you know. So it's just a matter of testing, uh, failing, and continuing on until you achieve the right result. And the most important thing is that your clients are coming back and want that cookie again, because if it's not, you know, I mean, you, you just haven't, 
you you didn't meet the uh, demand. So that's part of the creativity with me. Right. So I know you started off with pies, but please talk about what led you to identify the opportunity in baking cookies versus other desserts like pies and cobblers, which is where you started. Yeah, because I come out to the Inland Empire, I think I'm going to sell my pie, my $40 pie that had been <laughs> just raves in in the Longchamp, West LA area. And they're like, $40, I didn't sell one pie. So I start, you know, reducing the price, reducing the price. I get down to $20, but with a $20 pie, I had to throw in a dozen of uh, mini cookie bites. I'm like, um, th- this is not going to work. But then again, I'm listening at the market. And I can remember Michael Irving saying, always keep your hand on the pulse of the market. What are they asking for? Which is so important if you're trying to build a business and understand the market's needs. That's important. So what we did, we found out that individuals were stopping in. Now, keep in mind, we are in an industrial park. We're not in a retail location. So you're not going to have in your average... A uh, consumer coming in and wanting to buy a cookie or two. That's not going to happen. We're just total business and dust in business area. And we had individuals coming in saying, Hey, I'm going to see a client in the area. Do you have cookies available? We want to take cookies. And we're like, uh, Okay. So we would, you know, of course, have some cookies, but we weren't expecting the demand to be from corporate clients or the individuals visiting corporations or businesses, you know. And we're like, What is going on here? We ignored it for a while. And then we had one company, a towing company, Bill and Wax, come in and saying, give us 13 dozen. Well, this went on for like four months. They wanted 13 dozen cookies every two weeks. And we're like, oh, my Uh God, what the heck? And so we we were noticing is something going on. And cookies is what they're requesting, what they're asking for. We start really listening and clients would tell us, our clients want us to bring this cookie back. They, you know, they would literally be putting in their request for the sales agent or the individual to bring them certain cookies from the freaky cookie. Well, we start getting orders from those individuals that were tasting and sampling our cookies. We're like, oh my God, okay, this must be a really sweet spot here. <laughs> How do we identify it? How do we you know, grow it? What? How do we meet the need? What is it that they're needing in our cookies? So we start having individuals share their story and listening why the individuals, why companies or agents were coming in with our cookies, you know, and then agents would tell us, well, it's a matter of our, our clients knowing these cookies are coming from the freaky cookie. It's a differentiator. differentiator. You know, there is a different type of, of product and they like it. That's the key and they love it. So we really picked up on it and we're like, okay, let's build a freaky cookie, you know? So that's kind of how that went along. Of course, with a lot of struggles, but that is the logist of it. <laughs> I love it. So Sheila, please share the process you had to go through to meet the demand for freaky cookie. You know, like you said, you're listening uh, to the client, right? And then having to scale. How did you do that? What was the process? Oh my, that's a good question because You know, you don't know how many cookie orders you're going to get that day. You don't know what the requests are. And you're not in, in, like I said, in a a space or, yeah, in the retail space where individuals are going to be coming in. So what we found out at times, there were certain days of the week that clients will come and want cookies, but they weren't buying cookies on Fridays because they weren't meeting with their clients on Fridays. So we would start stacking cookies, you know, we're like, oh, my God, you know, we're cooking cookies every day. Like they're coming in. We're thinking of a consumer mindset. That's not in business. They're going out meeting their clients, let's say, like between Thursday and I mean, Tuesday and Thursdays. So those were the days that we needed to have the cookies available. But then again, you don't know how many dozen they're going to need, you know, so there are so many different variables that we didn't even identify or know had to be resolved so that we could meet the demand, you know, because most there were many a days we didn't, we ran out or we didn't have enough or, you know, so what we did, we hired a consultant and kind of guided us through, you know, to try to understand our struggles, our challenges, and to try to give us a guideline. Okay, well, maybe you want to, you know, put a pre-order, uh, you know, put a pre-order uh, thing in place and to see whether you get the pre-order. So then you can meet their demand. You can have them call you or email you, you know, put the order in. Does your system, it does your website allow for them to order in advance? So these were all the different type of challenges that we had to identify and resolve in order to meet the demand. And that was not an easy process because then we're thinking, okay, we had a one order 
a one hour order um, request out there. So they could place an order within an hour and we would have the cookies ready. But when you're getting four and five orders, that cannot, you may don't have the manpower, you know? So it's just so many variables we had to work through and to get a strategy and get it in place and make sure that it was functional and could work for us and meet the needs without frustrating the client. That's important too, because if if they're, you know, if they can't get the cookies, they're going to go to your competitor. So that's another issue we had to, it was just a challenge after challenge. And we eventually, we worked through it. We did. It took a while, but we were able to kind of navigate through it and meet the needs of individuals. And of course, COVID. So. Right, of course, which is another challenge that we're going to talk about. So because your company was established in 2018, please talk about how COVID, the pandemic, impacted the initiation of your efforts with the Freaky Hookie. Oh, well, yeah, that was an experience as it was for all businesses. With us at the time, or let's say pre-COVID a few months prior, we were looking at weddings. We were told, you know, because you're always getting a lot of advice, individual sharing. Well, you may want to consider weddings because individuals, you know, they love little cookies, you know, little gifts to give away, or they make great uh, desserts for the ceremony. So we started looking into weddings. And I can remember us going to trade shows and just trying to understand what a wedding market look like. Well, three months later, COVID hits and we're like, okay, no one's going to be getting married or any <laughs> public, you know, right. any meeting of individuals. Well, we're like, what do we do? We just really open our doors. How, you know, individuals were not comp- clients, sales agents, whomever were not needing cookies. They were not mel- I mean, dropping off cookies because everybody was working from home. So we really found ourselves like looking at one another, trying to figure it out for about a week. Then all of, a sudden, our, all of a sudden, our phones start ringing. We have businesses, corporations in the area saying, hey, they already we had relationships with them. We want to support your business. And we know, you know, the hospitals, first responders, law enforcement, they're working around the clock. They're exhausted. Let's team up. You all make the cookies and deliver them for us. Oh my God, that was opportunity wow. to help us busy. We were so busy. And at the time we were also serving as a direct to consumer. We had a, you know, the D to C component and we would get orders because we were also having our site was set up for D to C of individuals where family members had passed away. So that, you know, and deaths were really on the rise at the time. So we were getting all these orders, uh, you know, to deliver to individuals that had lost family members. And so I always think of COVID for me as a bittersweet because we brought smiles and, you know, it kept us busy. We were busy. But then again, we saw so many losses and, you know, the, the, you know, the results of how COVID had affected people, whether it was with the medical teams, the hospitals or what have you, but we would get pictures. And that's another thing that kept me going. We would get pictures of the nurses, the doctors holding our cookies and they got their masks off Mm -hmm. or, you know, they were just, you could see the exhaustion, but just to bite into a cookie and take a break in the break room, it really lifted us and kept us going. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. It was an amazing story. So of course you had COVID and everyone's on the lockdown when things start opening up. You know, we had to deal with that side of it as well. So it was always a struggle after struggle. You know, stores or retail was opening again and people going back to work. And we're all just anxious to get back out into the community and be able to connect and continue on with our, you know, our regular lives, our day to day lives. So, of course, the business, again, experienced another, you know, another challenge because revenues weren't up as they were before during the COVID. We had, you know, he had a spike on revenues. And so now we're trying to figure out again, not in a retail space, how do we navigate through this. Not everyone had gone back to work. We're still on remote, you know, uh, schedules, you know, so we had to navigate through all of that as well and figure out how to continue and grow the company. It was just like one challenge after another. That's right. You know what they say, a smooth sea doesn't make a sailor, right? So you have navigated, you have you know, uh, faced all those rough seas and made it out the other side. And I just have to say, Shelly, when I first met you, I met you at San Antonio Regional Hospital at a San Antonio Hospital Foundation event. And I just need to tell everybody the energy that you're listening to right now coming from Sheila matches nothing. When you meet her face to face, it just is overwhelming. It's so heartwarming. And I just have to thank you for 
for your bright uh, energy, your smile, and your enthusiasm and everything that you do. So um, with that said, let's go on to the next topic. Okay, so please talk about the resources you sought to implement and reach a broader base of consumers. Okay, so to reach the broader base, one thing we knew through all of this is that no matter whether we were on an incline or whether things were challenging with you know declines or we're just kind of going through those dipping se- sessions, we knew we had a product. We knew we had something, a product, but we knew to build this company, it takes more than just a great product. It just doesn't happen. You got to have that business component and it must be tight. It must be a very well-structured system, right? So we're trying to figure out what do we do? I knew, like I said, coming out of a profession, the corporate world had the connections. There was no question. I That was just what I did for many years. On the entrepreneurial side, I struggled because I couldn't pick up the phone. We didn't have those type of contacts. And I'm like, what do we do? I says, I know there's got to be answers out there. We were attending events, seminars, but it was it wasn't so much as entrepreneurship in a sense of how to build or keep that company, you know, growing or you know, scaling just to keep it flowing. It was none of that. And I started researching. I says, women, women, we're looking for support. We understand that there has been some dis, you know, some disengagements here, and we're looking to help and and to build one another. And I came across WeBank, the W uh, Women's Business International Council, and I got to I, I you know, start researching. I didn't understand what, what any of it. It was like a foreign language to me because. I did not have an entrepreneurial background, nor, like I said, could I go to someone and say, hey, you have, are you a member? Do you know anyone? And it took a while. It took me about a year and a half, and I just really reached out to them. They would answer questions. There was a supplier diversity component to this, and where you had Fortune 500 companies, you know, having spent this money to set aside for minority and women or, you know, women groups and businesses. I'm like, oh, my God, what is a supplier diversity program? And yes, I'm a woman. Yes, I'm a minority. Let me see what the opportunities could be. And so I did. I finally, after researching, that's my background. I'm, just, I'm always looking to answer and resolve every you know uh, point before I take that leap. Well, that couldn't happen here. And I just decided, let me jump in after a year and a half. And I became a member, got certified, and the door opened. And oh, my God, I'm like, what the heck is it going on in this side of entrepreneurship? So you have the women businesses that, you know, have you got them at all levels, million dollar businesses, billion. It just doesn't matter. Hundred thousand, you know, new startups like myself. It was just a range of business women out there growing businesses and willing to help you. And not only that, workshops, resources. I got to uh, I was actually I was invited uh, to join a cohort. It was paid. So I got in a, a PSP cohort. I got to understand what is a capability statement. You know, before a company is going to do business with you, they got to know what you're capable of. What do you offer? And, you know, do you meet fit our needs? So all of these different uh, sides of growing a business and scaling has been really, really challenging, but it's been a great opportunity. So I'm grateful for that. Grateful for the local chambers. We started there. Our chambers have been very successful, regional uh, or local. Uh, SBDC, just the different organizations have been phenomenal in helping us grow. But I just feel to really scale the scaling component side now where we are, it's been a very big help and blessing from the We Bank, We and my region, We Bank West. So we have a lot of support there. Wow, that is remarkable. Thank you so much. It's incredible when you are able to find such an impactful resource, especially when you're talking about, you know, women entrepreneurs that are basically experiencing similar events that you're experiencing, but are in it to support, elevate, leverage their resources and build together alongside you. Because, you know, I mean, there you don't always have to compete. There are, you know, uh, horizontal and vertical markets. Uh, if you can find other horizontal markets that, you know, you can jump into and assist others, then that's what you do, right? But we're coming up on a break, Sheila. Please hold on. And everybody listening, Yvette Walker here with ABC News 
News and Talk Southern California Business Report here today with Sheila Cavalier, CEO and founder of The Freaky Cookie, coming from a long line of bakers, writers, and a father who worked in the aerospace industry in the 1960s. This legacy of creativity, innovation, engineering, and a quest for out-of-the-box fun led to the creation of The Freaky Cookie, or as Cavalier sometimes calls it, The Cookie Disruptor, when we return. State San Bernardino is home to the only school of entrepreneurship in California. With globally ranked degree programs, you can start your journey today to become a successful entrepreneur. Learn more and connect at entre.csusb.edu. Hi, I'm Dana Rademacher with MGR Property Management. A lot of people wonder about the value that property management has for their property. Property management can include all property types, including residential, commercial, and HOA. It is valuable because property managers are experienced in what can happen at your property. We're aware of liabilities. We're able to do predictive and preventative maintenance. We know what is coming up with the changes in the weather, the seasons, how old certain aspects or different capital projects at your property are. We're able to best negotiate contract pricing, legalities with your tenants, and anything else that you may need to ensure that you're getting the full value of the property. If you're interested in speaking with a representative at MGR Property Management regarding your property management needs, you can visit our website at mgrrealestate.com or you can call our number at area code 909-581-6600 to be connected with a representative. The University of Laverne is rated first in California for alumni satisfaction. Learn more about accelerated programs offered online and on campus in Laverne, Irvine, Ontario, Burbank, or College of the Canyons. Visit go.laverne.edu. The University of Laverne. Go.laverne.edu. Hi, Ray Lance from the Diamond Center in the Claremont Village here. One of the coolest parts of a third generation family business is getting to know the families we serve through generations. Once you experience our friendly service, our fair and transparent pricing, and our beautiful jewelry that we make to last a lifetime, you'll stick with us too. Come visit us in the Claremont Village or at Lance, L-A-N-T-Z, DiamondCenter.com and see what makes us different. Ontario International Airport is on to a better way to fly with over 65 daily non-stop flights to more than 20 major destinations and the easiest airport experience in Southern California. Visit flyonto.com slash Ontario to learn more about Ontario International Airport today. Hi, I'm San Bernardino County Sheriff Shannon Dykus. If you're looking to start an exciting career in law enforcement and make a difference in your community, we are hiring. Dispatchers, nurses, deputies, laterals, and many more. For a complete list of our jobs and more information, visit sheriffsjobs.com. Welcome back, everyone. Yvette Walker with ABC News and Talk, Southern California Business Report, here today with Sheila Cavalier. CEO and founder of The Freaky Cookie, coming from a long line of bakers, writers, and a father who worked in the aerospace industry in the 1960s. This legacy of creativity, innovation, engineering, and a quest for out-of-the-box fun led to the creation of The Freaky Cookie, or as Cavalier sometimes calls it, The Cookie Disruptor. Thank you again for being with us today, Sheila. Thank you. Appreciate it. Loving it. Beautiful. So prior to the break, uh, you basically gave us an overview of your journey, part of your challenges, some of the opportunities that you found, and uh, the ways you were able to navigate those challenges. Today, uh, well, now let's talk about the broader opportunities that presented themselves and a larger uh, client base you were able to serve through procurement and contracts. Yes. Okay, so basically what we have done, you know, like I said, opening up after COVID gave us an opportunity to go out back into different events. You know, you have the events opening and different companies uh, 
that, you know, having meetings and we would just be celebrating like I just how I met you at the uh, San Antonio Regional Hospital event and just different opportunities were happening. And we were able to establish relationships, you know, so with that, you have Ontario International Airport, you got Coca-Cola, you have Evolu you know, um, Evolution Fresh, we were just able to really connect and, you know, establish these relationships. So, and new line. So many of the companies, they will use our products for their incentive programs, for their employees, celebrations. We have in-house branding, you know, so we are able to do custom labels and logos. Many companies are looking for that personal customization because of marketing opportunities, right? They're going out and doing trademarks. I mean, trade shows, I'm sorry. They're doing trade shows. They're doing, doing different type of celebrations. And then again, thank you gifts. So we have had that opportunity and we're just building like in the contracts with UCR. They have the supplier diversity program. I'm able, you know, I, I register with them. And so we're now providing business for them and soon to be uh, connecting with their catering service as well. So, yeah. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm going to have to uh, create some Southern California business report cookies. Now that we can sure. do the private labels, we're going to put the order in for that very soon. So um, sure. <laughs> with that said, Sheila, please talk about how clients adopt freaky cookies as a marketing and branding um, efforts to serve their own clients. Yeah, so what they like to do is, for example, PNC Bank, they have many uh, different type of events where they're marketing their services and their, you know, their different services and their different products. And of course, they want their cookies branded there. They have their agents out. I mean, their VPs and, you know, their different employees, team members out serving the different corporate clients. They want those cookies branded. So we have the labels where which is on our bags and it's all customized for them. You have, you know, they're having an event or they're get, they're having a, a, an event and they want to have the event themed, you know, for whatever the event is for the employees. They'll send us the artwork. We get those labels printed. They're on the cookies and everyone's celebrating the theme. It's just, you know, bringing the uniformity in. So, yeah, those are great opportunities for us for the customization side, like I said, which is huge. That's really one of our big sellers is the customization. And right. So. Please talk about your largest clients and the opportunities you have encountered through your journey. Yeah. So I always think about, you know, all my clients are pretty big, but Ontario International, we love flying, right? We just, you know, Ontario International Airport, they do, you know, numerous events and we are, we get the opportunity to be a part of that, bringing in a new airlines, you know, they'll maybe have the airline, uh, the flight number on there, the airline. So that's been a really cool experience. And just, you know, thank you gifts to the community or to their clients. So that has been huge for us. You have um, Uline, like they have an incentive program as well for their employees. And at, at the end of the month, you know, they will recognize their outstanding employees and we get to provide cookies for them. So those are some of the great opportunities there and they're just growing. I love it. So in addition to your recipes being over 100 years old and being influenced by your grandmother and your mother-in-law, what makes your cookies freaky and unique? And how do you rotate your recipes throughout the year? Well, wow, love it. Yeah. So our cookies are freaky in the sense that you're not going to find them anywhere else. They're unique. They're fun and fresh. We're going to give you some flavors that you're like, it's going to wow you in a cookie. You know, like I said, the key lime pie. you got a key lime and a cream cheese cheese infused together, strawberry shortcake. You have the strawberry, you got the cheesecake in there. And they're, you know, these flavors are infused. Freaky Fruit Loop. That's one of my favorites. I think I shared with you before. Yes, I said lime, that one. <laughs> yeah, the lime cookie, right? And you got the Fruit Loops, you got the Freaky Sugar. So we're giving you innovation. We're giving you out of the box, out of the box cookies. We're giving you experiences that you're not going to find anywhere else. You're just not going to, it's not going to happen. You know, so that's pretty much we, you know, one of uh, 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 that's pretty much our product offering is unique cookies. But you got to keep the staples. You got to keep your chocolate chip. We all, no matter how great cookies are and how and, unique you, and innovative you can get, you always want to maybe have a chocolate chip cookie in that pack, you know. So we do. We keep the staples there too. It's about three of them. That is and so, how do you rotate your recipes throughout the year? Do you have all of your cookie recipes available or do you rotate them? 
Yeah, we rotate. Absolutely. We have to rotate. We started out rotating every two weeks. Could you imagine? We were just driving our clients bunkers. They were like, wait a second, we just ordered this flavor. You don't have it in. You know, so we had to really kind of streamline it. And then we went to once a month where we found that was too often. So now it's every quarter. So, you know, again, I love the innovation side of it, creating the recipes. But then again, we just don't move the flavors as fast as we used to because we want to give the clients opportunities to come back and reorder and, you know, to be satisfied to know they're going to get that cookie again. They don't have to wait another year for that cookie, you know. So, yeah, it's now quarterly, which is best for even me because it, it, it was driving me nuts, too. So, yeah, quarterly so, is the thing. So then they can stock up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. And then those clients can ask for it again, and that can create more business for them because they're going to deliver those cookies again, you know? So, yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> Sheila, talk about what has been the most part, uh, fun part of establishing the Freaky Cookie and pursuing something that allowed you to channel your creativity and view your efforts as a source of joy and inspiration. Wow. Well, what has been is the fact that I'm giving people, we can give opportunity and hope. You know, I love the fact of being able to create cookies. I love the fact of operating a business and the scaling, but there is nothing more satisfying to me than to encourage someone and show them hope. That is the thing. I was just recently invited to career day at um, Almeria Middle School and the students there, you know, you're talking to teenagers, you know, and based on teenagers, they're, they're kind of in their own little world, you know, but the fact of them hearing about the freaky cookie journey you could see the hope in them and many asking questions. And, you know, they're like, they're many of the teachers were like really surprised because their students are kind of turned off, you know, what are you talking about? But they were really intrigued. So encouraging others with hope is really big for me. And I'm connected as well to an organization that really gets me out of bed every day, you know, and I'm going to be talking about that more in 2024, but one of those hard days, it gives, it gives me the motivation to know I'm making a difference in someone's life. And that's important beyond really growing a business and revenue. What are you doing to help your community? What are you doing to help others? That's at the heart of the freaky cookie and what I do. I love it. And that's why, you know, it, it comes out in your energy. And like I said, the first time I met you, I said, Oh my goodness, Sheila, I just adore your energy. And I think those are similar exact words, something like that, but just, and we can feel it right now. So, um, Sheila, please talk about some of those growing pains and and how you're able to keep it fun, right? Because you just alluded to that right now by saying, you know, it's you find the fun and the joy and in, in inspiring others and bringing light. Please uh, talk about the way you're able to keep it fun internally as well. Internally, that's huge, right? Because your employees are the bolts of your company. Yes. And yeah, my team. Oh my gosh, I love them so much. So. My concern, one of my priorities is making sure that they're okay, you know, so keeping the energy at a state, at a, at a level where they can be comfortable in sharing if they're experiencing something that may be a challenge or just come to work. It's a way for them to vent and have fun and we can work on a project and we can put together orders and, and pat, you know, do what we need to do. And yet have that commodity where commodity where we all can connect and enjoy one another. That's important because they're important to me. They're that, like I said, they're the bolts. They are humans and I love them. I love my employees. I'm just honest about it because if they're happy, my clients are happy and that's the energy of my company. So yeah, we get, we have challenges, but you work through those and you can work through those when someone knows you're genuine and you really care about them and you're just, they're not a number. That's important. So the energy in my in the internal side is huge for us. And I value and they know it. And so I get good, hardworking customer. I mean, employees, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, so please talk about some of your greatest supporters and the best way to support a new and growing business, such as the Freaky Cookie or others that are out there that are just starting. What is the best way to support them? The best way to support a new startup, I believe, is to hear and listen to their story and to hear what what is it that they may be struggling with or just what is it like that make them tick or what what is the opportunity what what seems to be an ex an uh way for, to to help them improve you know and i found that to really be a big opportunity with webank you know they understand the growing pains they understand the challenges they understand the success but then again what i found is my local support like you, Yvette, you're hearing the story. I mean, we have connected at so many different 
events and to hear your passion for the local community and the businesses and how we are building our community is huge. And that is a big, a big I, I believe just one of the biggest uh, support points that a company, an uh, individual can give is how can we as a collective group help another company or another uh, business grow and succeed? Or, you know, so that is huge for me, just being support and and maybe directing them to resources. That's huge, too, because then everyone doesn't know all the resources. I surely don't. And I'm still learning. And it's just like taking little pieces of information and then collectively developing it and growing. I love it. Thank you so much, Sheila. Please talk about the different ingredients, flavors and recipes you offer through the Freaky Cookie. You started off sharing some, but I know you have many. Please talk about those. Yeah, so there, like you said, there are many. Um, looking back, as you guys can see in my uh, background here, the chocolate chip caramel salted cookie is a huge seller. Um, individuals love it. Those are, I mean, my flavors, the meshing of the different flavor notes, it just kind of creates its own experience. You have strawberry shortcake. Now that's one of one of my true favorites, the strawberry shortcake, because you got the strawberry. You have that spring kind of connection with this, you know, strawberries, the shortcakes, the whipped cream. But I use cheesecake, so you got the cheesecake, which is a really great mesh of flavor and blend. And right now we're in holiday, and so you have red velvet cheesecake, which is just like phenomenal. I'm getting many requests on that one as well. So yeah, you. I mean, my key lime pie, that has been a very big, huge success. And then to watch the kids with cake batter. I mean, and I'll be honest, we got adult kids too, because they were sitting there and they're just loving cake batter because of the sprinkles and all the, you know, the little elements of the um, the cookie. So yeah, those are great. And again, the recipe itself is what really drives me because it's always, it's connecting back to my family, it's connecting back to a legacy. And I get excited because I can continue to build from it. Absolutely. So Sheila, talk about the importance of customer service and what that looks like at the Freaky Cookie. Oh, my customer service is huge. It is, customer service is pretty much the nucleus of our customer of, of our company because our customers are, they've helped us to build this company. That The customers was what keep us going. Customer service is making sure that those could every cookie box that leaves the cookie, the freaky cookie was well uh, packaged, was the taste was right. Your clients enjoy them or your family enjoy them. All of those components are important. So it's not like selling a box of cookies and we're done. No, we're going back and we're following up with our clients and we want to know, do you have any concerns? Was everything okay? Please share with us. We leave that open door because customer service is the foundation of what we do. Our cookies are great. Yeah, I got to say it. I love them too. But my customers are more important. My customers are the are the foundation, you know, so they're happy, the freaky cookie happy. We have served our purpose and that's what it's about. I love it. And so what is some of the feedback that you've received from your customers? You know, uh, do they share stories with you of how, you know, sharing your cookies with others have impacted or, you know, uh, impact the, the people that they shared them with or themselves being able to share something so unique and so delicious and so filled with love? Oh, yeah, we get the stories. We get to hear the stories. Um, we, you know, what really shows us is that when the customer comes in and they're saying, hey, this client of mine is asking for your cookies, you know, and they are wanting this flavor and that flavor. And it takes them back to their childhood or they remember grandma's, you know, they say, you know, the, the base of the cookie. So, you know, the flavor, the the freshness, the richness of the cookie, you know, those stories move us. And that's what we, we get a lot of feedback there. Or, you know, I have customers that will come in and say, Gosh, I, I have an, you guys are now, you have really increased our minimum order amount because we are growing and we just couldn't do, you know, a couple of order, couple of boxes here and there. So we did increase it and kind of get negative feedback. Okay, well, we don't want to need $150 of cookies right now. You know, we just want a couple of dozen. We want to take them home to our families. And, you know, our ch this child is having a birthday. So, and they want your cookies. So we get those stories and it really moves us. And possibly one day we can open that uh, market back again. But for now, with the scaling, we have to kind of, you know, be more structured and only have a certain dollar amount that, uh, you know, for the requirement to fulfill the order. So we get great, great stories back from the cookies. 
and, you know, individuals and the uniqueness of the cookie. I wasn't expecting that in a cookie, you know, and we once had a caramel apple. So that was like, oh my God, they were like, oh, that caramel apple in a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so it, we get really good stories. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So Sheila, as we are approaching Christmas, please talk about the more popular recipes and which you believe Santa will prefer this year. Oh, gosh. Well, Santa has two sets of kids, I always say. He got the adult kids, he have us, and then he have the little ones, right? So the little ones are going to be setting Santa out some cookies from cake batter, you know, and then we have the Christmas sugar, which is a red sugar cookie. And it has the sh uh, sugars on top, and it's just a balance of great flavor, not too sweet. Santa likes that because he's it matches his red suit, you know, and it tastes good, and it goes good with cold milk. So yes, yeah, for so for sure. And then uh, for adults, the adults in us, we like either the ginger snap. I think Santa's going to want a ginger snap because it really takes him back. It's a classic, and you know, you can just taste that. That southern, I don't want to say southern, but that, you know, that, that, how would I just explain it? It just got that nostalgia feel to it. You know, you, you're, it's taking you back to the real, the real points of Christmas. So you can really enjoy that um, ginger spice. But then again, you got to, I always say my favorite is red velvet cheesecake. Oh my God. I love red velvet. It's a, it was a staple in my family for years during the holidays. And to add in the cheesecake is just a phenomenal mix. So. Yeah. Santa's Sounds gonna, amazing. Yeah. Santa's <laughs> going to be happy this year. He needs more freaky cookies. <laughs> yes, that's right. So with that said, Sheila, how can listeners and viewers connect with you and place their order with Freaky Cookie for their corporate needs? Oh, my God. Yes. We would love for you to do that, listeners. Uh, you, you see our website. Our website is The Freaky Cookie. Keep it simple. The Freaky Cookie. Or you can email us at hey at The Freaky Cookie or Sheila.Cavalier at the Freaky Cookie as is shown behind me. And you also have a contact phone number there. We do have a minimum order amount, which is $150. We're doing gifting. We ship nationwide. So keep that in mind. We ship nationwide all 50 states except Hawaii and Alaska. And yes, so we, there's still time for Christmas. Absolutely. We ship UPS as well. So and we do deliveries. So keep that in mind. I love it. So as this year comes to a close, Sheila, please talk about what is inspiring to you as we move into 2024. And are there new recipes that we can expect? Well, yes, we are one of our top priorities right now is bandwidth issues. So we're looking to grow, I mean, for a facility, we need to scale, we need to have the bandwidth and the space size to fulfill larger orders and to enter into larger contracts. That's really important. And in order to do that, we have to have the largest, the larger kitchen. So that is priority. Uh, flavor wise, I'm always looking at new flavors. I have a few now that I wasn't able to release in from 2023 that I know are just going to be phenomenal in 2024. So excited for them. Always looking at innovation, uh, brownie mix with them. You know, we love brookies, but I got something that's a little different. So yeah, we got some new stuff in store for 2024. Beautiful. Well, Sheila, thank you so much for sharing your story, for your enthusiasm, for your light and the joy in bringing Freaky Cookie, the Freaky Cookie to consumers all over the country. Yes. Thank you so much, Yved. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you to giving us this opportunity to share our story, the journey, and look forward to connecting with you. And we got to get you some cookies in there too. Yes, yes, that's right. So for people, audience members, if you don't know this, my guest knows this. Every program, I start off with a tall glass of cold milk. I will not have a program without it. That is my secret sauce. And every time I hear cookie, I'm thinking about my milk. So thank you for that, Sheila. All right, everybody. <laughs> everybody listening, don't forget to find us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Check us out on scbrtalk.com. A few things happening in the community. Tomorrow is the annual Kris Kringle Craft Fair, where you will find that special homemade gift in celebration of the holiday season. All ages are welcome and it's free. Wednesday, December 13th, all day at the Ontario Senior Center located at 225 East B Street in Ontario, California. All right, everybody, the Pro Indoor, 
indoor soccer is back with the Empire Strikers and their home opening match against the Baltimore Blast with Mexican superstar Marco Fabian this Friday night, December 15th at the Toyota Arena. Get your tickets now. Buy two, get one free, and help them defend the Empire. Call 909-457-0252 to get your tickets. Don't miss my interview with Dr. Ron Heredia, Inland Empire Future Leaders Chair, who earned a Bachelor's in Psychology from UCLA, a Master's in Education with a concentration in Psychology from Pepperdine University, and a doctorate at Pepperdine Graduate School of Education and Psychology. He's authored multiple academic papers, presented at conferences, including meetings of the American Educational Research Association, and guest lectured an undergraduate education course at UCLA. In his spare time, he serves as chair of the board of directors of Inland Empire Future Leaders Program, an educational nonprofit organization devoted to leadership and the educational success for high school students in San Bernardino, Riverside, and Los Angeles counties. He also serves on the diversity and equity, as well as the budget advisory committees of his local K-12 through district. Next week, we will have Senator Mike Morell talking about his recently published book, The Road to Restoring the Family, Leaving an Inheritance to Our Children's Children, inspired by Proverbs 13.22. Author Mike Morell believes parents should bestow upon their children wise counsel to help them grow into good people and strengthen future families for generations to come. Having stronger families makes for a stronger nation, but it can be tricky to keep up that strength with heightened stress, anxiety, and negativity found in this world. The road back to restoring the family is Morell's message to his children, as well as to all other families out there of the important facts and advice that is sure to help spiritually, morally, financially, educationally, and responsibly. You do not want to miss it. We will see you all next week.